All right, everybody, hello and welcome. As always, I am Sean. This is In The Mix, episode number two of our FC St. Pauli save. I didn't say old man that time, so we've already made progress on yesterday's episode. Thank you to everyone that went and checked that one out, and thanks to all the positive feedback that we got in the comments section and on Twitter. I appreciate a tremendous amount. But the season keeps on rolling. We've got a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to try and bring you in today's episode as well, including the start of our first season in the two Bundesliga as we try and push our way towards that top half finish and maybe, just whisper it quietly, sneak our way into the Bundesliga next season, but there's a whole bunch of stuff to go through. If you haven't gone and watched yesterday's episode where we introduced the squad, did our off-season, friendlies, tactics, all that sort of fantastic stuff, make sure you go and check that one out because it'll help bring you up to speed in this episode where we've got two huge fixtures to start the season. Let's not waste too much time. Let's jump straight in and see how we get on. So first and foremost, as you guys can see here, we are currently not having played any games in the division, which is perfect for us. We did, of course, get knocked out of the DFB Pokal in yesterday's episode, if you didn't go on and check that one out, spoilers. A bit disappointing, I'm going to be completely honest, to lose to a semi-professional side, but... You know, it's a long progression. We've deliberately put together a squad that is relatively young. Uh, our oldest starter in that game was 20 years of age. We do have some big players still to come back into the squad and into the lineup as well. And we've got some people joining us in January that I think are going to help us out quite a bit. Having said that, we are going to make a couple of tactical tweaks. One of the things that I don't think we did particularly effective in that game is really kind of fill certain spaces the way that we need to. So we're going to make a couple of adjustments. The first one that I'm going to do is we're going to take this left wing role that's currently an inverted winger, and we're going to try it out as an advanced playmaker on attack. I just want to see how it goes. And then the other thing that we've got up our sleeve is we're playing with an advanced forward, but I think that kind of left Louis Carbonell in the last match very much isolated. You can see he hasn't done that well over his last five appearances in preseason. And a 6.5 last time out, we need a little bit better from him. So we're going to adjust this one to be a false nine, which I think is his preferred position anyway. It does two things for us. It helps kind of get rid of that major issue that we were having here, which to be honest, I don't think was a major issue because we've got midfielders breaking into it. We've got people cutting inside into that space. But hopefully by moving that false nine role and potentially putting it to a deep line forward or something like that. Actually, you know what, maybe we'll try deep line forward. Maybe that'll fill it in. Oh, that gets rid of that little bit of red as well. Okay, so maybe we'll give that a go. You can see most of the traits that he's got for that role aren't too bad. So we might give that a whirl, see how it goes. The other thing that I want to change, this is more of a group tactical instructions. We're going to get rid of this shorter passing one. We're just going to drop to slightly more direct a little bit to try and get ourselves a bit further forward, a bit quicker. Catch teams in transition a little bit more. I just want to see how it works out. We're very much in that early part of the game where I haven't quite figured out the match engine just yet and I haven't quite figured out what player roles I prefer. So we're still working towards getting that expertise or getting that experience with the game where we do know what kind of things we need to change and adjust throughout it. But that's part of the journey. That's part of working out how this game works this particular season and credit to Football Manager for freshening things up and getting some new concepts out there. Out of possession, in transition, we're going to leave all that stuff the same. I'm going to leave our, uh, our possession tactic pretty much exactly the same. We'll leave it as an advance forward as well, just in case we need to adjust around. But those two tweaks hopefully get the best out of Dashner, hopefully get the best out of Carbonell, and we can maybe start finding the back of the net with a bit more regularity against some of the better sides in the division. Otherwise, not a crazy amount to bring you. I, there were some things that I perhaps left out of the episode earlier this week that I could kind of show you guys, maybe relating to training. I've just got my coaches doing the training, but I have selected a different coach for each different level. You can see I very deliberately try and keep some sort of segregation across the coaches so that each specialist coach is working on one specific area. And as you guys saw yesterday, I've set myself up to be very good at fitness coaching, very good at goalkeeping coaching. We did bring in a very high quality goalkeeping coach, which is fantastic. As we get higher in divisions, we'll start adding more people. And then Ehrman can focus on shot stopping. We might bring in a goalkeeping handling coach or we might bring in a specialist fitness coach that's quite good. And I can just focus on strength and or quickness conditioning or something like that. But for now, being in the lower divisions, not having that big pool of players to or big pool of coaches to pull from and having a limited amount of roles, we're just going to try and balance it out so that each coach is a specialist in their area and try and get our star ratings for that as high as humanly possible. We are... Pretty high as far as the average ratings are concerned in the two Bundesliga, which I think is very impressive given a lot of the strength and a lot of the money that's available in that area. Recruitment team members, I'm not worried about right now. Medical staff, I'm not super worried about right now. You can see our heads of sports science. We've still got to pick those up throughout the course of the year. But for right now, I think we're in a good spot in terms of the videos and stuff that we have available to us. It'll be a longer progression, I think, to get some of those people in and to get them to being like, you know, world-class, top of the Bundesliga, potentially best in the world staff. It doesn't start in episode two with that stuff on hand, but I think where we've started is a really, really strong point. Now today we've got two huge fixtures. Darmstadt 98 is the first one coming up. They don't give us the best light preview anymore with this new interface. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it. Let me know in the comment section below if you're enjoying the new like match interfaces for the game itself. 
They've been up and down. They were most recently in the Bundesliga back in 2015, 2016. They were relegated back down the year after. They've been down in the second division now for the last three seasons, finishing in the top five last season. So not a bad side. I think back in the day, they were actually managed by Torsten Frings, if I remember correctly. But cool logos, cool kits. They could be a big challenge for us this year. And then we've got Eintracht Braunschweig, who I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of, but if I just say it confidently and say it into the microphone as clearly as possible, no one's going to question it, unless you're German. And then by all means, correct me in the comment section below every time. They've had a rough run of it. They did actually get relegated into the three-league a couple of seasons ago. Finished in 16th in their first year, back down at that division, but then they've come up most recently, finishing in third spot in that division and back in the division this year. So hopefully they are one of kind of the weaker sides in the division and we can build up our confidence and get a good result in the build-up. We are going to have a look at the season preview as well for the Bundesliga 2. We didn't look at it yesterday. The overwhelming favourites are Hanover at 96 with $1.73 odds. Hamburger, $3.25 or €3.25, I guess it is. Fortuna Dusseldorf, who just came down from the higher division, they are at $4.33, as are VFL Bochum, who've been in the Bundesliga a few times throughout the course of the season. We're down in 18th spot, which... I should be more concerned about, but I'm not really. It's because we've sold players that had high reputation and we've brought back in young players that haven't yet built that reputation. I don't think our quality is as bad as some of the other sides down towards this position in the division. We just have to finish top half. That's all we have to worry about. I'm sure those odds have potentially ballooned out as well because we also just got knocked out of the DFB poker by a non-professional side. So there's a bunch of different things that I think are contributing to that figure outside of the actual playing ability of the squad. Because if you look at it, it's not horrific. Most players are at two and a half or three stars. We will get quite a few of these young players as well, improving as the season continues. One other change I think we're going to make, just as I'm looking at it, Dion McGee is 20 now. So I think I'm going to go with Maury Bamba, who's 18, just because I think he's got more time to develop and be that higher ceiling player. But we'll see. We'll see how that one goes. Uh, still no Finn Becker. Hopefully he'll be back for the second game. Berke Dogan also out. He played for the under-20s today, which is absolutely fine. I've got that set up in our things. But really, we want to try and turn our form around a little bit, get a good result, and get a good performance. Tactical meetings, this stuff's all new. They tell me every single time that I need to be going like defensive or whatever else. I'm just going to listen to the opposition instructions. I really want to try and get into a good rhythm and into a good tactic regardless of what the uh, assistants and stuff might think. There's a few players here who aren't 100% familiar or 100% up to date with the tactic just yet. That's fine. That will come with time and we will get this bar right up towards the top by the end of the season. But the lineup that we're going to go with is Losas in goal, Bella Kochap and Norman Will Williamson. It's a very long name. It's a bit of a handful. As a defensive partnership, Rodriguez is the left wing back. Gundeland is the right wing back. Aremo will anchor midfield with Finn Becker out injured. Gyabia, Gyabua, Gyabua. Let's go with Gyabua. Gyabua will play alongside Uriate, the two Mazayas hopefully getting forward and creating some chances. Dashner is the advanced playmaker on the left-hand side. Bamba playing on the right as the inverted winger. Carbonell is a deep line forward up top. Big strong bench as well. There's a whole bunch of different players that we get to add in here if we need to. Nine on the bench is absolutely massive. Full disclosure, I didn't realize it was nine on the bench until about you know the week before preseason started. And I thought I need to add some more players or we're never going to have a full bench each week. Again, it goes to this team sheet, which I'm not... I don't know how I feel about it. I kind of miss the old TV display, to be completely honest. No, it does come up in another area. We might see it in a second. We're going to say point finger, which I think is assertively. I'm expecting you to win today, boys. And Carbonell looks focused, which is good. Good Deland looks motivated. Fantastic. Probably need a little bit more. Preparation is everything in these days, and you may feel you know what to expect from Darmstadt 98. They're a team that has potential to make it up. Let's just go with that. How are things between you? I don't know him. I have no idea who that is. None at all. So this is where you see that screen and it doesn't really hover on it enough for me to go through their lineup and through their team, which is a bit frustrating as it disappears into nothing. Looks like they're playing a very similar 4-3-3 to what we are, which is good to see. Our team looks fantastic. Got all these fantastic little uh, kit and face packs here, which is fantastic to see. But again, it flies by so quickly. There's nothing we can do to talk about it. And of course, it's the first day of the season. So why would any of this stuff matter as far as the league table is concerned? Both sides come out. I like that little touch. I like this little warm-up touch and whatever else, but I just missed that one display at the start. Now, shout out to a couple of people who did let me know. If we minimize this portion, we can actually get more stuff on the table or on the field, which I think is fantastic. First side of the match, though, Uriate towards back stick. Williamson was in there. Good header over the crossbar. Keeper was right there, though. I think he just watched it over. And there's an immediate goal kick here. Long ball forward to the right-hand side. Rodriguez with the header forward. Over to Beta, the right back. Dashner does well to close him down. 
Good triangle there in midfield finds Skark and now the overlapping fullback. Reverse pass to Skark has gotten goal side and found the finish. We might be struggling this year. I might not make it through to January. This might be the quickest like beta save. I know we're out of the beta, but beta save I've ever done because if this continues, I will probably get sacked at one point or another, which is a damn shame. But it's a good overlapping run and Dashton just doesn't go with him. Skark with a good finish, it must be said. Lofsas can't get across to it. It's low and hard across him, and he peels off towards the corner flag, giving it these ones, which just see, like, we're not that aggressive a team. It's day one, mate. Calm down. Throw in again. I haven't been able to change these bloody graphs on the background thing because highlights are coming thick and fast. Gundeland sends it down the line for Carbonell. He's dropped into a good little pocket of space. Just need him to drag some defenders away now. Bamba cuts inside, finds Dashner. Ball out wide to Rodriguez, who did very well in the first game, it must be said, overlapping. Can he find the cutback? It's cleared away. Gibua over to Arimu. Back to Gibua again. Just find the forward pass, boys. We're not in any rush. Now Uriarte. Arimu. Good switch to the overlapping fullback here. It's Gundeland on the other side. Ball in towards Dashno, and the header wasn't far or wide. Keeper was scrambling, but it just goes beyond the near post. All right, now I might be able to finally do that. Darmstadt stats. Let's get their body language up to match ours. Let's go with latest scores in the Bundesliga 2. Let's also try and get the league table up as well. And just as I've done that, we've hit half time. I probably could have used a shout in that period. But for whatever reason, it hasn't worked. Now, the XG, I don't know much about XG other than it's kind of expected goals or it's the momentum of a match. I think each of these jumps is like a chance that we've had up to creating an opportunity to try and find a winning goal. So we are ahead in the XG stakes, as we know from yesterday's episode or from the episode earlier this week, that doesn't matter for shit because they are winning at the moment and that is the most important stat. So we're not going to focus on that too much. Now, I did throw water bottle yesterday and it didn't quite work. I'm just going to go with point finger assertively. I'm going to say I expect to see a much better showing from you in the second half and everybody seems motivated, which is fantastic to see. Tactically, are there any tweaks that we want to make? Carbonell's playing a little bit better, but again, Dash are not playing particularly well. So we might revert back to the previous structure and let's see if we can't get to something a little bit more familiar and hopefully create a few additional chances. We will start that second half. We'll give it 15 minutes and then we're going to have a look at some subs, some changes. I wish I could get rid of this, the dugout bit or just make these smaller or something like that so that I could display the information a little bit differently. The other part that we're missing now is I can't make shouts unless I hit that button. But we are through the hour mark, so we're going to make some changes. So tactics and subs. Sorted by match rating. Bam has struggled, which probably didn't make the right decision. So we're going to bring on Dion McGee for him. Looks like Losa is struggling again, second match in a row. Uriate not playing particularly well. Patrick, the finger, will come on to make his debut in the center of the park. I'm going to hold off on that last sub. I'm not going to change out my keeper. I think that would be a bit harsh. And I don't think I've got anyone on the bench to bring on for Dash. Now, I do have Lubongo and Bongo, but let's hold off on that one. And then let's also pop this back up and we're going to use a shout. We're going to demand more and just see how that works. We're going to hit play again. This is See, this is what I mean. Like The interface is just, I don't like it. It was so much easier with the drop down menu to do shouts during the course of a game. And now it feels like it's this big, bloody difficult thing. And we're already through the 80th minute, so they are just running away with the game at the moment. Let's switch to possession. Let's just drop our intensity a little bit, maybe invite a bit more pressure onto us. And if this doesn't work, potentially we have to look at a tactical rethink or a tactical restructure. Dashton's going to come off. Lubongu Mbongu will come on. We're going to give him a team talk and say, I've got faith in him. He seems motivated. Fantastic. He's got about 10 minutes to try and bail us out here. And then we might use one more shout for everybody else. Let's tell everyone to fire up, see what that one does. Most people seem fired up, which is fantastic. But we're into four minutes of additional time. These have been the most boring two first games I think we've ever seen. And I'll tell you what, the pressure must be on me because that's two back-to-back 1-0 defeats to start the series. Key performer, Rodriguez, who again played well in the first game. Gundeland also had a good game. Losas, I'm not sure how he played so poorly. He only conceded one goal. And even then, I don't entirely blame him for it. Throw water bottle, far from pleased. Okay, if you seem motivated that time, so maybe that's something that's better off being used at the end of a match rather than during the course of a match to try and turn the tide. Uh, I've got a question here from the staff or from the media, I should say. Why did you persist with Louis Carbonell when it was clear for all to see, particularly the fans, that he wasn't up to it today? Uh, I haven't got time to get in this. Pick my team is my responsibility. I didn't have the option on the bench. He was part of a team form. Is that the most important thing? Didn't feel there was a reason to replace him. It's none of their business. Yeah, let's go with that. I'll stick up for my players in this early part of the series. We don't need to uh, get too negative with anyone. The finger makes his debut after joining on a free transfer during the offseason. I'm going to send my assistant to the post-match press conference because I can't be asked to be completely honest. Maybe we switch up our tactical style. Maybe let's try with the vertical tiki taka. Let's see what happens. Let's just give it a go. Let's switch it to attacking. And then as far as our out of possession instructions go, let's go back to what we were familiar with, which is a much higher defensive line, offside trap, tighter marking, 
pressing intensity. Let's go with that. So it's kind of a tiki taka in possession. It's kind of a vertical or more of a gig and press, a poly press outside of possession. That's the idea in my head. We'll see if it works out that way. And let's make those adjustments back. Let's continue with the advance forward. And let's switch this back to being an inverted winger. Let's try the false nine, you know. Let's actually make that adjustment up top. We were thinking about the false nine before the game. Let's try it for the next one. We do have a couple of days before the match, but I'm going to utilize a rest day just to try and get everyone fully fit. And it is also my hope that Finn Becker will be ready to go for the next match so we can bring him in for Arimu and getting our captain back, getting one of our star players back. Maybe just that uh, little bit of stability in midfield will help us quite a bit. Magic editing though. I'm going to jump forward to the game against Braunschweig now. All right, just like that, we're a couple of days further ahead. Now, we've got a couple of knocks. Uh, Gundalan looks good to go. Bella Kochat looks good to go. Finn Becker, not 100% there in terms of match chart. Unless they're suggesting he gets through 45 minutes. We're going to see how he goes through 45. If he's not playing particularly well, we'll take him off at halftime. If not, I might try and push him to get through 60 minutes, maybe an hour. But we will see how it goes. We don't want to risk pushing him too much and then having him get injured and be back out again for a few weeks, given that he does seem so far to be relatively important to his, our side in his absence. We haven't done particularly well. Team selection will bring McGee back in for Bamba, who struggled on his first starting opportunity. And then really, if uh, this kind of little bit of a tweak doesn't work, we might be in a little bit of trouble, but we'll figure it out as we go. Or maybe I just need to be a bit more patient and let our tactic really kind of like settle for 10 games and then everyone get in the rhythm and everyone understand it. Pretty much team talk, point finger assertively. Show me what you can do. Nobody cares. Oh, Juan Rodriguez cares, which is good. Maybe we tell the midfielders that I have faith in them and Dion McGee's turned around. Victor Weber is, ner is nervous, but he's our backup goalkeeper. I wouldn't expect him to come on no matter what, unless there's a red card or a sending off or something like that. We're, of course, sticking with this 4-3-3 shape. I'm not going to get too frustrated. I'm not going to go all at attack just yet. And they are playing like a 3-5-2 or a 5-3-2, depending on how you want to look at it. Doesn't look too bad, but it is going to be two interesting, contrasting styles as we try and get our wing backs cutting inside. Oh, sorry, our wingers cutting inside and our wing backs overlapping around the outside. Good overlapping view here as well. Nice little intro to open up the game as both sides line up. And we're immediately going to hide this again so that we keep an eye on their stats and their star players. For whatever reason, it resets to body language every time or to general stats every time instead of body language, which is the one that we want. And I'm now going to keep a closer eye as well on the clock because we might try and utilize our shouts a little bit better in this match. I don't think we did a particularly good job of it last time out. They've got Felix Cruz in midfield, who I think is Tony Cruz's brother. He is indeed Tony Cruz's brother, Felix. He's not a bad player either. Not a great player by any stretch. No one near Tony's level, but decent enough. All right, we're going to hit pause there because we've got about 10 minutes remaining in the half. We're going to use a demand more shout or maybe fire up. What's berate do? Okay, let's scroll. Let's hit it. This is a learning experience. We're going to hit berate. And a couple seem focused, but it didn't have quite like the wide reaching uh, effects that perhaps I was hoping for. So we might not use that one again. But as halftime comes through, again, we're higher on the XG stats, which I know doesn't mean a damn thing unless we find the finish, but they haven't had many chances either. No real highlights for either side as far as the first half is concerned. I'm going to say calmly, no jester, I'm not happy, and everyone's responded positively, which is great. I'm going to go back to our original attacking instruction with the poorly pressing and stuff on it. Just because maybe I'm thinking now, and I'm just thinking out loud for the content, maybe I'm a bit, being a bit too harsh. Like back-to-back -back defeats probably isn't the way to uh, immediately try and get everyone used to a new tactic or a new style, or even a new manager to an extent. We're through the air marks, so we're going to hit pause. Let's just go on match ratings. I think everyone's conditioning is relatively good. Dale McGee, again, struggling on that right-hand side. Maury Bamber will come on. Louis Carbonell not playing particularly well. We're going to bring on Aristen Akame for his first appearance. Let's set him to be pressing forward on attack. That'll do the trick. And again, Federico lost us, struggling a little bit as well in goal. Let's tell them we've got faith in them. They both seem fine, but we're replacing effectively two of our better players with two prospects that aren't particularly good. We need to get a shout in, and we're going to go with fire up. Let's try that one. See how everyone responds. Okay, most seemed overwhelmed or pressured. So fire up didn't work in that particular scenario or setting. Here we go. First real highlight of the match. Gundalan with the throw-in on the right-hand side. Uriate finds him again. Good little triangle there. Tries to cross it in, and then it's cleared up the line for Branch Fog. And they've gotten goal side. Kobliansky straight at the goal. Lossas pushes it away, and Bella Kochap does very well covering for him, scrambling it away for the throw-in. We're inside the last 10 minutes. We've got one more sub up our sleeve. Let's make it now. Lossas again struggling, but Gibus is going to be the guy to come off. We'll bring on Arimu a little bit further forward. Tell him we've got faith in him. And then I think we also need to use 
one more shout. It takes me way too many clicks to do this at the moment. We're just going to go demand more, entire team. And let's hit play. So let's just leave this little bar up because this is uh, this is not great. I'm not going to lie. This interface is uh, not the best in terms of being able to see everything that's going on. And now we've had a draw. So, so far, I mean, we've got our first point. Maybe we just focus on the positive and say we've got our first point. Again, the defensive line didn't do too badly and they didn't really create anything at all. Our XG was much better than theirs, but still not fantastic. 0.51, I'm not sure what that means or how to read it. If someone can explain to me, like, is it just out of, is 1.0 the entire thing or can both sides get like 1.5 or whatever else? Seven shots, three on target, 55% possession for St. Pauli. Three shots, two on target, 45% for Braunschweig. Unlucky boys, let's go with that and let's just try. There's a few that seem motivated, which is good. I don't really want to lose the dressing room this early in a save or this early in a series. Does see us get out of the relegation spots, thankfully, with that singular point and negative one goal difference. So hopefully we can get ourselves back up towards the top half spots. And I guess that that is also the good point. Like we're not expected to be challenging for titles, so that pressure isn't going to be as high as potentially it would be in other areas. Club Vision, I'm getting a C grade, so that's not the worst in the world either. They're disappointed by our performance in the DFB Pokal. That's fine. Disappointed in some of our outbound deals, but they're happy with a lot of the other stuff that we've done at the same time. So it's not panic stations. It's not a disaster area just yet. We're going to put that poorly pressing back in place. We're going to also, I think, do this one. But let's try this pressing forward roll. Let's see how it goes. I know I'm not giving stuff time and I'm not allowing anything to breathe. But maybe what we'll do is off screen now, we'll jump forward a little bit so that we can give some of these roles time, we can give some of these players time to get settled and to get used to being in the lineup. We will have to adjust training for that. So let's get these guys working towards being pressing forwards. I think that will help us quite a bit. Everybody throughout the course of preseason and this early part of the season just working on their preferred player roles. We will, in the next few weeks, do an episode where we go through and start picking particular focuses and particular traits for different players that we think have areas to improve. But for right now, want to get everyone's match conditioning right up to the top, want to get sharpness right up to the top, want to get a starting 11 that has, you know, like consistently played together, starts building those relationships. That's really what we want to see. But again, we're not going to panic too early. We're not going to worry too much. As far as the schedule is concerned, we might jump forward a little bit. I'm thinking maybe we'll jump forward a fair stretch and come back. We've got this game against Nuremberg away from home, which should be a big one. They're currently in 11th. Then we've got Hamburg SV. That's huge because it is a Hamburg derby. And it does mean that we're going to hit 10 games in the Bundesliga and then come back and show you guys where we're up to. So by all means... Yeah, let me know in the comment section below. If you guys have got tactics that are working, if there's anything massive about this tactic or the possession-based tactic that you guys can see that's like, oh no, that doesn't work this year or that looks shit or change this, by all means, let me know down in the comment section below. I will change and adjust based on your feedback. More than anything though, guys, I just appreciate you all watching. That's the part that means the most to me. If you want to help support the channel that little bit more, celebrate the start of the new series, you can drop a like on this video. Gets us higher on YouTube search results when people look for football manager content. You can also subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date on all of our future videos as they continue to release all the way through 2020 and into 2021 as well. But like I said at the start, more than anything, I just appreciate you guys watching. That's the part that means the most to me. I've been Sean, and I'll see you all again in the mixer.